Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is remove the fly from the vise, place our hook in the vise, and today I'll be using a Diachi 2161. You can also use a 2151. The only difference is, is the 2151 is a l much slighter diameter than the 2161. Other than that, they're both exactly the same hook. Okay, so we have the hook and the vise. Now we're going to grab our motor vise auto bobbin off our thread post, and we're going to start wrapping thread. Usually start my thread right where the end of the wire is for the hook return. Okay, we're going to take this all the way back to right where the into the point is and we're going to stop there and then come all the way forward again and we're going to stop right there and we're going to tie in what's going to be our tag and it's going to be from the hook point, the tag area, to the barb of the hook. But I'm going to wrap the whole hook with my uh, tinsel just to add a little more body to the fly. So the tinsel I'm going to be using is Danville's size 12, which is a medium. Just off. And my tag is going to be silver, flat silver tinsel. I'm going to be starting that up here at the beginning of the hook. It's gold on one side and silver on the other. And you want to wrap back with just barely touching turns. Don't want anything overlapping. This upper part of the body here doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, now I'm back to where my tie-in point is, the very back of the hook. Now for my tag, I'm going to be taking three more turns. All three touching, and then come forward. Tie that off. And cut away the excess. Your actual tag is going to be from the hook barb, which is about the hook point. Next we'll be adding the tail, so I want to bring my thread back, it doesn't matter going over the top of the silver tinsel because that's going to be underneath the body. Bring your thread back right to the hook point, and the tail for this fly is going to be golden pheasant tippets dyed purple. And you want the tail to go right back to the bend of the hook. Tie it on slightly on the side closest to you and then roll it up on top of your hook so it's nice and straight right on top of your hook. 
and I'm going to have a butt section there so I want to make sure I have feather wrapped down past that so it's nice and smooth underneath the butt section. Cut away the access and clean that up. Now we're ready for the butt section. So for the tail, we'll be using fluorescent hot pink floss. And I'm going to leave a little extra long tag here at the back. I'm going to keep that extra long piece in the back right on top of the hook and make touching turns all the way back. All the way back to the tie in point for the tail. And come forward again. Again, touching turns. And I'm going to want my tag or my butt to start right there. So retie my floss off there. Now my floss has been doubled over and retied again, so that makes a stronger tie-in point. Then start wrapping back towards the back. Touching turns again, not overlapping. reason I'm using single strand here so it's nice and flat. Bump the camera. Get back to the tail. Okay. Now do one extra turn there and start coming forward. Thread back. Tie that off. I'm going to put at least four good wraps on there. A couple more to tidy up because floss is really slick and you don't want that pulling out when a fish grabs it with their teeth. And that's why I put this extra long piece here. Now I'm going to pull that right straight over the top and tie it down. And cut away the excess. Now what I did here, that extra long piece I put up over the top, that's to keep the floss from coming back over the top of the tail or over the top of the tinsel when a fish grabs a hold of it and is pulling on it and it won't strip that back. Wind my thread all the way forward again. Try to even out this body a little bit. And that's your butt section. So next we're going to tie in our rib. I'm going to bring my thread part way forward here. And I usually tie my rib on the bottom. Wrap that all the way back to the butt. Back forward again. All the way to the front of the hook. Tie 
tidy everything up all the way back to where your wire ends at the butt and next we'll be tying the body so <clears throat> on the body I'm going to be using Hairline Steel Hide Ice Stub in UV Purple and I do I tear off little pieces like this at a time and then I have a piece of photo paper here I stretch it out get as much as I want on there now I'm gonna create a dubbing loop oops just messed up my tail create a dubbing loop and wrap that down good and tight and I'm gonna take my wax wax the thread up pretty good here I'm going to set the loop aside over here on my tension knob on my vise so it's out of the way. So then I'm going to take my dubbing loop off the vise there. I'm going to take my dubbing, open up my loop, place the dubbing in the loop, slide it forward, try to get my big fat finger back out of the loop. Take my dubbing spinner from I use a dubbing spinner from OPST. I'll show it to you when I get done here. Really great little spinner. Give it a spin. Okay. And I will wind that thread back to where my butt section starts there at the front and start winding it forward. Make each turn just touching the previous turn. You want to stop about where the return eye loop is there at the end of the wire. Tie that off. Cut away the excess. Pull everything back, clean it up a little bit. And I'm going to take my hackle pliers. I'm going to grab the end of my wire here. Hopefully, I didn't cut it too short. And I'm going to start winding that forward for my rib on the fly. Just perfect. Barely left enough to get a hold of the cut off. In the little end back, tie it off. And now the body is complete. So now we're going to do the hackle. I'm going to put a hackle on before I put the wing. Most steelhead flies and salmon flies nowadays have. The wing on first and then the hackle is a collar on the outside forward but this one I'm going to have the hackle on first and then the wing last and I'm going to be using pink fluorescent pink chaplain. Okay so pull the feather out of there, get rid of all the fuzzies. scissors and cut the feather back some. Okay, that's what I have on so I'm going to start with. I'm going to grab the feather about where I think the length of the hackles are that I want on here. I have a bowl of water over here on the side. I'm going to get a couple fingers wet. Start pulling those back. 
and the fingers wet again. Then I'm going to turn my feather so that the concave sides faces me. And I'm going to run my thumbnail along that stem. And I'm going to tie it on. Now running my thumbnail along that stem is going to help me with folding that feather. Cut away the excess. Make sure it's good and tied down because it is wet. And I'm going to grab the end of my feather. Get my fingers wet on the other hand again. I'm going to pull those back. See, by getting your fingers wet, running your thumb along that stem really helps in folding that feather back. And I'm going to take three wraps. Just touching. That's two. Ah! I could feel that coming. I knew that was going to happen. Feel my alcohol plier slipping on that stem. And the third wrap. It's not quite as easy to get your thread through the feather when it's wet, but it can be done. Okay. Cut away the excess. Pull everything back. And there you have a nice folded back hackle. It's nice sweeping back. It'll give you great movement in the water still. And that's it for the hackle. And we'll tie on the wing next. So next we have the wing. And the wing is going to be purple bucktail. A piece of that off. This side. Trim a little bit of the ends off there. Put in my hair stacker. Here are the short ones. I want to kind of keep my wing a little sparse on this fly. Okay, I want my wing just not quite all the way to the end of the tail, which is the bend of the hook. A couple loose wraps, start working my way back. Then I do this, that tightens the Tightens the hairs all up. And I'll come in on the front. My hand shakes so bad it's kind of hard for me to get all these. again
one pink feather fiber there that's a little crazy. Take my whip finisher. This spool of thread happens to be overly waxed. Whip finish. Okay, we have excess thread, bob them back on the thread posts. This again, get everything all nice tightened up. Now, here's where I get rid of the stray hairs. More little ones sticking out right there. fingers wet, my wing formed how I want it, and I let it dry. After that dries, I'm going to put my uh, UV Solaries head cement on there and hit it with a flashlight. Oh, I'll just go ahead and do the head cement now. Love the Solaries applicator they have here. This little fine needle really does a really nice job on the heads. Okay, go ahead and hit it with my light. I gotta make sure I keep my distance when I hit this with the light. The smoke that comes off that. I happen to have an allergy to. <laughs> and there we go. Rod's Ethel Bar Special. Thanks for watching.